Hey y'all, Enzo here from Knox Knife Mods, and today we are talking about a new model from one of my favorite designers, Matthew Warewine of Wear Knives. He makes some awesome custom models, and lately he's been branching out into some really nice production runs, and today's knife is his first budget offering uh, among all those production knives. So, without further ado, let's get into it. y'all today we are talking about not what is in this pouch but what is underneath it it is the Civivi nugs in ugz the z gives it extra cool points so so that's awesome a big tip of the hat to uh matthew Warewine of wear knives for being courageous enough to put the z at the end of this model name that's <laughs> that's cool man uh we will get back to this though we're gonna have a bit of a comparison here What's exciting, though, about this Civivi Nugs is that it's Matthew's first uh, budget-oriented production run. And uh, every knife up until this point that he's done with a production company has kind of priced around the $350 to $400 mark. So they are not affordable knives. This one is. Uh, for what you pay for this, which is $50 to $60, I think it's a really excellent option, especially if you want to get into a wear knife. If you're not familiar with wear knives, they are... Uh, custom, he's a custom maker and his models are in such high demand that he has to run lottos just for the opportunity for the winner to purchase the knife. Like it's, it's that, his stuff is in that high demand. So, and it, it's well deserved. His work is beautiful. Uh, stunning Damascus patterns. My favorite thing is his handles. His handles are always just visually incredible. Uh, a lot of combinations of materials within one handle. Um, just really beautiful stuff. He does work with a lot of like vintage micarta, like Westinghouse and like butterscotch my card and just crazy stuff and that's actually the reason why I went with this particular uh, blade handle combo because as Civivi always does this is available in a variety of options you can get it in uh, black g10 green micarta and you can also get it in this uh, and I'm going to butcher the name of this wood I think it's Quiborsha wood <laughs> um, as I understand it it's basically African rosewood but yeah you can also get it in this rosewood and it, it, to me the rosewood uh, really kind of has that aesthetic, or as close as we can get to that aesthetic of what his customs have, you know, with their warm colors and, and uh, their micarta textures and stuff. This is really nice, actually quite a bit nicer than I expected. It's very soft to the touch, it's warm to the touch, of course it's wood, uh, but, and it's also visually appealing. Um, it doesn't feel uh, like cheap at all. Um, it, it's, it's, it's a nice experience. Uh, I haven't bought a wood handled knife since I was probably like 13. Ah! So this is the this is the knife that got me to make that jump, and I'm really, really glad I did. Anyway, guys, so that's just kind of a backstory on on um, where knives and kind of where we're at with uh, and, and what's so exciting about the fact that this knife is an affordable uh, wear design. But let's get into kind of a flyover of the knife here. Our blade steel is 14C28N. Awesome steel. I'm really happy with that at the $50, $60 mark. I think that's a great choice. Um, I would have preferred Nitro V, but it's not a huge difference between the two, honestly. Um, so yeah, 14C28 in is great. Tough, easy to sharpen, and reasonable edge um, edge holding. So good stuff. Um, one thing that's cool, I, that I, it's interesting to me, um, the last two Civivi knives I've handled, this one and the RS71 that belongs to Walsh, which was our last video, by the way, if you want to go check that out. They both are Civivis and they both have uh, milled pocket clips, which is really funny because we, Civivis, you know, higher end, uh, they seem to be steering away from that. They seem to be doing a lot of foldover clips. So it's funny to me, Civivis got knives coming out with, with you know, custom milled clips. I don't know. That's, I love it. It's cool, man. It looks great. Uh, so yeah, so you've got a custom milled, I shouldn't say custom, you've got a milled clip here. Looks really good. Letterbox liners. I don't know if y'all can see that, but these black liners here are just a little bit proud of the handle. I think that's a nice touch. I didn't expect that. And one other thing that's cool is the wood backspacer. They didn't, you know, they paid attention and they made sure that the wood backspacer is flush with those proud liners. So that's a nice touch. Um, so yeah, it's a liner lock if I didn't already mention that. One thing I've noticed about it that I'm, I'm not a fan of, and I've had multiple Civivis with this, 
It does have very early lockup, like very early, and I, I don't really like that. Um, I'm not worried about it. It is secure. I'm not going to, well, heck, I'll spine whack it real quick. Um, I'm not hitting it hard, but I mean, it's not, it's not even trying to shut. So I'm not worried about that. Um, I mean, if one of y'all wants to take, you know, your 50 bucks, buy a knife and spine whack the absolute heck out of it, go for it. But we don't get knives for free here. So I'm not eager to just beat the crap out of the knife. But I mean, it, it's not showing any signs of budging. Um, I would still rather for my own <laughs> sanity, I'd rather have a later lockup, but I don't know. What are we, we're sitting at about, mm, I would say about 20% there, maybe a little less, maybe like 15. Um, so it's fine, it's, it's not going anywhere. A Little bit of lock stick though. Um, and I've tried to work that out with some graphite and it's a little bit better now. It was very audible before. Now it's not as audible, but I still feel it. Lockstick doesn't bother me personally, but of course I need to let y'all know that. Um, and uh, let's see, anything else we want to touch on? Uh, the handle is on the shorter side. I have smallish hands, so for me it's not a huge problem. But man, if you've got medium to large hands, I feel like your pinky is going to want to be floating back on the end. Something to think about. Uh, for me, it works just fine. But even then, I find that when I'm going to close or open, I it just sometimes it wants to feel like it wants to come out of my hand. I have gotten used to it, so there is that. But, you know, like I said, larger size hands, your mileage is definitely going to vary. We do have a tiny flipper tab up here also for deployment. I didn't think that I would, well, honestly, I'm not really a fan of it, but it's not as um, irritating as I thought it would be. I'm not a huge flipper guy. There's only a few knives where I really like having the flipper. Um, but this one's not egregious. It's a very small flipper. Um, the custom design this is based on does not have a flipper. Sometimes it has a front flipper, but it does not have a flipper tab. However, what I do appreciate about it is that it does kind of give you a little guard here, which is nice. And it is functional, I feel, because the jimping is noticeable enough that your finger's not gonna wanna slide up right there. Um, you can also kind of choke. I wouldn't recommend it though. That's a tiny sharpening tool. You don't want to dip your finger in there. But I did find myself kind of doing this when I was like slicing up apples for my kids. So, you know, that's something um, that can, you know, I guess you can use it for that, but I wouldn't recommend it. Um, but if you're a fan of flippers, you're going to be fine with this. The, uh, the, the detent is, is fine for the flipper. It's really more focused on the hole, on the deployment hole, which is what I would prefer. So I'm happy with that. Thumb deployment feels really good. Uh, middle finger deployment also feels great, and the sound that the knife makes on lockup is really satisfying to me too. There's a little bit of a ring there. I don't know if that's going to come through on the microphone or not, but it's a nice sound. Um, what else we got here? Our blade length is in this really happy range that Matthew Warewine seems to like to hang out in, which is like the 3.25, 3.3 inch range. I love that. Like That is my favorite EDC size. Not too small, not too big. I'm a fan of big knives, but there's something really nice about the size that he likes to uh, produce his blades at. So I think that covers about everything. Here's the top down view. You can see that backspacer there. One thing on this backspacer is this may not be evident in the video, but there is a tiny gap up here toward the top. Again, it's not a deal breaker or anything, but I do have to let you know. It's just one of those little cosmetic things. It's like, eh, okay. Um, and I think that should about cover it. Um, it's not a deep carry clip, uh, which I don't like deep carry clips. It's really about the amount of carry that I, uh, the amount um, of handle coming out of the pocket that I like. So you can imagine it right about there is what's coming out of your pocket. I think that's perfect. I'm a fan of that. Uh, so that's cool. So let's get to the other knife I was going to show off here and we're going to compare against. This is one of wears uh, higher end productions. This is the Rayot. This is the Lucas P. It was his first production run. Um, and this is a pretty straightforward version, just straight up titanium. Blade Steel's S35VN. Uh, yeah, and you can see again, that blade length is almost exactly the same. It's a beautiful knife. Uh, however, the difference between these two in price is just, it's, it's just gargantuan. Uh, so these came in, and I didn't pay this much for this because I bought this used, which is how I buy most of my higher end stuff. These started at like 385, which I think is kind of crazy. Um, it's a good knife. I do think it is really high for that, for what you're getting. Um, 
I do think in this case, it's one of those things where you're paying for the designer. I love Matthew Wearwine stuff, so for me, I just waited till I could get a good deal on one used, and I got an excellent deal on this because it had some marks on the scales, which I didn't really care about. Um, however, my point being, the reason I wanted to bring this up is that this is gonna be a very similar situation if you saw my video on the Civivi Snex Vision FG versus the Wii Snex Vision R. Very similar situation here. If you want to get a wear design, get this one. Um, currently what we have available for wear designs, the Lucas P is pretty hard to get now, but the Alley P and the Wolf P, which are kind of similar styling, the Alley has a sheep's foot blade, but the Wolf P has a kind of a similar shape to this. Uh, those are available now through Rayot and they are roughly same price, kind of that 350, 38, uh, 375 zone. And then there's also the Boker Max, which is I've seen from Knife Joy for like 230. That's from Boker. I don't know if they had Rayot do it because they've worked with Rayot in the past. I'm not sure what's going on there. That's a titanium frame lock, frame lock as well, though, with very similar kind of lines to the Lucas, different back end on the handle. My point being that the Civivi Nugs is far and away the most affordable option, and I think it's gonna be absolutely the best bang for your buck. Um, it actually has a better action than this one does, which is crazy because they're both on bearings. Um, this one feels like it's on washers, which is fine because uh, I like washer-based actions, but if you're gonna run on bearings, you know, you kind of want that, that slickness and that, well, slickness isn't the right word. You want that smoothness and that fast drop. Uh, I, like I said, I prefer washers, but it's not actually on washers, so that's kind of an odd thing. It does feel very elegant. It's very smooth. Closing it is really nice. It's got a very nice detent. You can hear it when it shuts. I'll do that one more time. Yeah, it's really nice. But again, I just feel that for the money, this is, as Civivi always does, it's a really well-made knife. Um, it's attractive, it, you know, it, 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 it works great on its own merits. Um, so, if I, I just kind of wanted to answer that question. If you've been looking at all the wear designs that are, that are out there and you just want something that's affordable and that's functional and that's gonna work great, this is 100% your choice, go with this one. Uh, however, if you want to get something that's, you know, got a high level of materials, titanium, and, you know, the other models other than this one are in 20 CV. So that's, you know, if you want that, that premium steel, uh, then yeah, go ahead and go for the Rayot models. You won't be disappointed. Your wallet's going to hurt. Um, but they're, you know, they're perfectly well-made knives. So I guess that's kind of it, guys. I just wanted to do a brief video on that, kind of compare these two. And um, yeah, just kind of sing the praises of this knife because I think it's a really awesome uh, model. I'm just so stoked that Matthew's bringing out some, uh, or working with a production company that's going to do something a little bit more affordable. Um, Mod-wise, I'm thinking about stuff to do. I don't know. Um, we will see. <laughs> we'll see what, I, what we can come up with. Anyway, guys, I've been Enzo. This has been Knox Knife Mods. This has been the Civivi Wear Knives Nugs. Um, and <laughs> thank you guys for joining, and we will see y'all very soon. Peace.